striking low to high and getting our shoulder pads under people. Uh, this sled I usually work with on days where we're not in pads. But I do think every once in a while it is good to film your players on it because you can really get an idea of are they actually doing the things you're talking about. So I'm going to show you a clip from last year, then I'm going to show you a little bit of an older clip, and I want you to see it. So here we go. So here's Christian, and this is uh, Christian and Andre. And you see, all right, so the target for this block when we work on this sled is right down the middle of the pad. So at the moment of contact, I want to see their nose right down the middle of the pad. How do I determine if they have good pad level? If the screws of your helmet are under the screws of the helmet of the defender you're blocking, you've got good pad level. So in this case, I would like to see a little bit of that bag over their helmet, which is not really happening right here. So I would tell you on this rep, I think the first step is pretty good. I think their elbow, if you watch Christian, watch, watch number 70's arm. See how that arm swings away from his body? When you're, the further away from your rib cage that your arms get, the less likely you are to strike the defender the way you want to. So on this block, thumbs up, elbows together. That's what I say all the time. But the reason I say that is because if your elbows are together, your hands are really tight. So I don't tell them to get tighter hands. I tell them, keep your elbows on your ribs and squeeze your elbows as you whip your arms because then your hands will land inside. So when you do this, you really don't ever want your upper arm to leave your rib cage. And Christian's does a little bit, Andre's a little bit better. You can see like there's no space between his tricep and his rib cage. That's what you want it to look like. It should be a very tight whipping of the arms. And then you can see the strike and the lift, feet gaining ground, upper body lifting. Feet gaining ground, upper body lifting. Over and over and over again. Okay, so here's a little bit of an older shot. Right, so now understand, the kid on the left, Christian Jones, he's about six foot seven. So here's Evan Neal, right? He's six foot seven. Now watch the difference. Now, with, with these two guys, I can see the bag. That's what I want. That tells me that we are underneath the defender. Watch the tightness of the arms. Look at both guys. Upper arm still connected to the rib cage. If you do that, when you whip your arms, you will strike the defender with your hands inside and underneath the defender. You'll get what you want out of it. All right, so I don't want to belabor it, I want to keep going. Okay, here's some examples just before we get into the combinations. What do I mean when I say blocking low to high? Well, it's easy when the guy's right in front of me, get underneath them. But now when you watch this clip, now that you're watching the left tackle, there's the defender. Now the guy's over there a little bit. So I've got some time. And right before contact, I want you to watch the dipping of the hips and the striking low to high. Right there. That little dip at the end and the low to high strike is what we're talking about. That's block, that's what I mean when I say blocking low to high. Again, it's a six foot seven player. Okay, here's another one. Watch the right tackle. Again, six foot seven. There's the pad level that I'm talking about. The screws of his helmet under the screws of the helmet of the defender. Look how tight his arms are. And now he's lifting, he's lifting the defender with his upper body and his feet are gaining ground. And now he's creating space. Like I learned a long time ago, like offensive football is about creating space. Defensive football is about taking space away. He's creating space by playing with better pad level and better hand placement 